Okay, so tinnitus, ringing in the ear, brain fog, dizziness. As a matter of fact, so many symptoms you don't even want to get into them. But it started off, you woke up, he woke up with tinnitus, ringing in the ear, and then it started progressing from there. Okay, this is what we found right here. Oh, and you've had one prolotherapy, two PRPs, and one bone marrow concentrate. And this is kind of what we found. So here you can see the jugulars. Uh, really, I probably should show you the first phase. So the, the first phase that we did, uh, which was an arterial phase that picks up all the all the veins too, and at least it goes picks up the jugulars all the way down to the bottom of the neck. Um, first thing we saw on you is that they were missing. Let's get that screen up here. That's the first one. So this is actually what you looked like. First thing we saw is that there were no jugulars. Uh, so there's an entrapment up in there. I even called to make sure, I even checked with the technician to make sure that it was, it was done the way we've done it. The computer is still sending a contrast through the person at the same exact, same exact, and then the person right after that got scanned today, it's back, you know, these, these normally we'd see jugulars filled up at this point. Uh, and they were not filled on you at all. There's a back view, you can see the arteries, no veins. Then we did, it. here's a, a venous phase where you can see how the veins are completely engorged. We, you do have jugulars, we had to wait a while for the contrast to get there. And it's filling up the spinal canal. Um, it's it's all, a lot of congestion there, venous congestion. Uh, there's another shot of it. Uh, we'll come back to that in a moment. Okay. So here, here we see the styloid is kind of out in front. Uh, yeah, it's part of the thing. Uh, but basically what we're saying is that this happened from you sleeping on your stomach all these years and that there's uh, issues with the fascia, the carotid sheath, the muscles, uh, and through there. So we ended up going inside your mouth and I found trigger points right back, right in the front here. And we'll show, show you the normal anatomy of the musculature. And, and we, I went around and through there, and it's like I felt some, it just didn't feel, how do I describe how it felt? Well, it, it's better when it's normal on one side and then boggy and, and like a knuckle on the other side. But in your case, you, you kind of had it on both sides. But when we went in there, acting like there was trigger points, acting like there was some fascia that got stretched, uh, well, for one thing, you felt that, that that's right where the thing is. Um, and it, it didn't feel right in there at all. So after we hit the trigger points in there, you felt some relief. And again, I think it's the, the carotid sheath. Now, now, Ida Rolf says that the muscles go more lateral as they're injured. So just picture somebody being on their stomach with their head turned to one side. And as a matter of fact, you did that for several years till you couldn't do that anymore. Then you had to turn your head the other way. Uh, so sleeping on your stomach, I think, is what actually did this here. So we have muscles going more lateral. We have fascia in there. Um, and these, this jugular, this is your dominant one. There's just no contrast going through there. It just runs through like a, like a stream. Now we ended up doing ultrasounds on there and it did kind of show as if you were putting your thumb on a hose, getting the hose real narrow so it's a real high speed shot, shot through there. And then when we move the atlas off of there, I mean, yeah, you can see the atlas is entrapping, uh, the, the jugular is being displaced by the atlas. And we got some beautiful images of, you, of us moving the atlas off of there. The ultrasound's changing dramatically. Uh, your symptoms feeling, you know, feeling a lot better. Uh, uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, you've got it on both sides. So we saw all that in there. Now let's bring these screenshots up here that tell us, tell the rest of the story. Okay, so one of the things you told me about when you were younger, you used to stretch the back of your neck, and we're seeing a, a joint capsule that has a calcification. Now you're 30 years old, so a calcification of a joint capsule at 30 years old, that's that's pretty uh, rare. Now the rest of the joint capsules are beautiful. They look pretty good. That's where they're it's just riding up there as if that capsule has been injured and calcified. Uh, calcification is the body's like end stage try to, uh, to heal. Uh, uh, there's another view of, of the jugulars being displaced and entrapped. Um, all right, so here we are, you in the neutral position. We're looking from the bottom. We, we care about these atlas misalignments. Uh, we, found, we found great things happen when we put these atlases back into place. Uh, here you can see all the venous congestion in through there. Uh, another view of it. There, it's being pulled like taffy. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. It looks like it's, the jugular is being pulled like taffy. It's like it's under a tension. Um, 
that that also seems to be the thing. And again, uh, there is some hypermobility. You, you, if somebody sleeps on their stomach with their head in one position, you're going to have some stretching in there. Um, so as they tighten up, you seem to feel better. And we'll show you the rest of the story here. Yeah, even between C1 and C2, the veins are, are filling up those spaces. Now, now sometimes the, the veins will back up so much that they're they're hard, they're not compressible. Um, we weren't able to really get up in there to see how, how compressible that stuff is, but uh, it can, it, it's not good. So left head rotation, when somebody turns their head to the left, the atlas goes to the right. This lines through the center of the frame and magnum. So you can see that the jugular opens up with left head rotation by the atlas sliding to the right, opening it up. And that's right head rotation. Now you notice something funny happens with right head rotation, and that is that, that the atlas slides off of its axis, C2 comes out of, the whole thing shifts. Uh, the, uh, again, I think the, the only way you could do that, well, the way you did it was from sleeping on your stomach with your head turned to one side. Um, there's some other documentation to that. So the other thing that kind of sets you up, you've got a little bit of scoliosis in your upper thoracic. So all, everything is not equal. You're going you're gonna to have a tendency to, well, your upper cervical spine kind of has to cover for the uh, unequal loading. You have unequal joint loading that translates through here. So it's, you're kind of set up a little bit. So you didn't have an owner's manual on how to, how to manage this thing, but you do now. You do now. We got some great documentation, and we'll show that to you in a second. Okay, so this actually is, is comparing uh, after the atlas adjustment and with a 10-pound weight around your neck. Uh, so basically, they look about the same from the side. That is, we put a 10-pound weight around your neck. The, the cervical curve uh, moved towards a better position. C2 went back into extension. The atlas moved away from the jugulars. And then we reproduced it with the atlas adjustment. It looks about the identical. Now, here you are before. This is before the atlas adjustment and after the atlas adjustment. What we do is we put a dot on the bottom of C2 uh, in both locations because we care about C2 going back into extension, the atlas pivoting back away from the jugular. Just picture the jugular sitting in front of here. So here you can see how far in front of that relative line uh, the atlas was and then afterwards. And you could feel the weight shift. Anything you want to talk about, how you feel different, that, that's fine. Uh, the ultrasounds, uh, before and after, before and after. Well, this is, and you can pause the film, the, but, this is, these are all the right sides, these are all the left sides. This is what the jugulars look like before the weight and before the adjustment. Now, we're not putting weight on your neck, it was more of a, of a test here today to see what happens when we bring the curve, it, curve back. And uh, it, it made a significant difference because we caught it with the ultrasounds as soon as we put the weight on there. And then afterwards, this, this is the most, actually the most dramatic difference is bef before and after the atlas adjustment. So just picturing your thumb on a hose, uh, going real fast, and then it, the flow just kind of normalized. Uh, okay, so what, what did we feel when we went inside your mouth, in the back of your throat, way up high? Well, I, I'm going to say that the longest coli muscle uh, on both sides seemed to be um, injured and moved more lateral. Uh, I think we were hitting that longus capitis muscle, and just, just logic. Any of these muscles would have been stretched when you're unconscious, and, uh, and it felt like it was you know, unhappy back in there. And, and one of the things is when you ring the doorbell or where something lives, people can tell. And you, you could tell when we got in the back of your mouth there. Um, right, so the rectus anterior capitis muscle, if it gets injured, according to Ida Rolf, it will move more lateral, it'll bow up, uh, so we are seeing some displacements. Now that's more of a muscle, muscle uh, school of thought. The fascia people will say it's all the fascia and you, I don't think you can injure one without the other. It's, it's not an island. Uh, you, can't, you can't put forces through here without having everything that, it's a tightly packed spot. Even the uh, superior pharyngeal constrictor. So I had to go through that muscle to get to the deep musculature. And was it fascia that we were stripping to? Maybe. Either way, it helped. I think it helped us get that atlas, help that curve come back when we did the atlas. Um, you know, there's a good shot of the carotid sheath that seemed to be matted up and displaced in your case. Uh, so there's that. 
big spur sticking out between C2 and C3, and we, were, we did the left and right head rotations to see if it was moving, and it's not frozen, it's just telling me that you've been have a, had an anterior head carry for quite a while, and that giant joint capsule's been the thing that's been screaming at you and causing pain. Yep, and, and that, of course, is a location of pain in your neck. Uh, there's a, yeah, these are all beautiful, beautiful, and you can see that spur. So that's gonna affect, it is gonna affect left and right head rotation, actually right head, right head rotation. It's gonna kind of, it's a bony stop. You got a bony stop. Now I've seen these become rat's nests in there. So you're 30 years old, this is young. Uh, this is the very beginning of it. You're gonna manage this thing correctly. Uh, stop working with a laptop in bed, leaning forward. Uh, no judgment, just saying. <laughs> Uh, left head rotation, right head rotation. We took an inventory to show how, how things are moving. Uh, and you're gonna end up getting more, you're gonna get bone marrow concentrate and probably Prolo too, okay. Uh, left and right head rotation. So yeah, the interesting thing is that on x-ray, when we did the upper cervical x-rays and you've gone to several doctors, uh, people I know um, and yeah, Actually, this is left and right head rotation, showing how the jugular opens up on the opposite side when you turn your head left and right. But on x-ray, and there, yeah, you can see uh, open, closed. But on x-ray, the upper cervical x-rays, we want to adjust you from the left. And I'll show that. I think yeah, we have, oh, you know what? I don't have those in the screenshot. Anyway, on the, on the upper cervical x-rays, it says to adjust you from the left. You're leaning over. Everybody's been adjusting you from the left. It's not wrong except that we found this. This is left head rotation, right head rotation. So you turn your head to the left, you can see how the atlas slides to the right. It stays kind of in a reasonable position. When you turn your head to the right, it rotates quite a bit. Um, and everything, you come off your axis, everything shifts completely relative to the frame and magnum. Um, so we acted as if this was the most important thing. And we, we came up with a vector that is just not taught uh, and upper cervical circles yet. Um, so we, we came in at quite a unique vector there that we found from doing these scans. And it, you know, it did great. It did great for us. Um, another view. This is left head rotation, right head rotation. The green line is the center of the frame and magnum. I mean, that's it, man. Um, any questions, anything you want me to say? You covered everything. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right.